that our sins mm-hmm. are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for yes. being right with you. Help us to walk in the spirit, God, and walk in the light as you give us light. We're thankful and grateful to you. At a time like this, it's so good to have you as a father. We glorify you, and we cling to you, God. Little children cling to your knees. <laughs> At a time like this, God, we just little children cling to your knees. And we know, God, as you said in Psalm 91, you will cover us with your feathers. We love you and thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so tonight, uh, Pastor John is going to bring us a lesson. Prior to his doing that, I'd ask uh, uh, Evangelist Tyler to give us a scripture. But also, I wanted to open up the floor before we went to, the, to that for any testimonies. Uh, anybody got any testimonies they want to share? Uh, maybe something you heard. Uh, maybe some advice you want to pass along. We're going to take about... 10 minutes here and recognize the kind of times we're in with this um, CV-19 and maybe somebody has some updates, some advice or testimony. So we're going to open the floor a little bit, but whosoever will, you can unmute yourselves and give us any testimony or the Lord laid something on your heart to share. Please do so. We have about 10 minutes for that. So the floor is open. Well, I'll start um, with a couple of things I saw in the church chat from the prayer requests and things I did not know. I saw two requests here. Uh, one was that uh, uh, for Nigeria, um, um, the, she's a 16, for those who don't know, she's a 16-year-old who goes to our church and uh, has been kind of adopted by, by Elise, one of our church members. Uh, but she works at Walmart. And apparently, they're not allowed to wear masks at work. Is that correct? Is it Lisa or Nigeria on? Yes, that's correct. This is Ursa. Okay. So at Walmart, if you work there, you're not allowed to wear a mask? They're not allowed to wear a mask. They say it'll scare the customers. So wearing masks will affect their bottom line. Yeah. I did not know that until I read that in a prayer request. Yeah, the, so one, an employee, the ones in Texas wear masks. The Walmarts wear masks in Texas. In Texas, they do wear masks. Yeah, all, the Walmart people wear masks, all of them. I think they're well, the one, changing I only one, but they wear masks there. Sure. So you made a change today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're, they're telling people to wear masks now, not the N95 ones, but just regular ones, and even making your own fabric mask. They're allowing, they're telling people to do that now. Come on in, sweetheart. You come on in. One of the blessings from this thing is that all my children are here, so my daughter's here from... Uh, Dallas, my little corporate attorney, and she's been with us and will be with us at least till the end of April, looks like. So we just thank God all our kids are here for the first time in a long time. Um, Torlene, I know you're saying amen down there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the kids at? <laughs> uh, well, you know, everywhere. He said, what are they saying? Oh, what, what are the kids saying? Yeah, you said you oh, amen. Oh, they're, 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 you know, I mean, with parents like me and Grace, how could they be anything less than ecstatic? Right? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it's Brittany, I'm looking at Brittany room. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, that's all we can do. It's like hold my mule here, you know, keep him from shouting. Um, but, uh, it's, it's such a blessing. But uh, so anyway, Grace is saying that apparently they changed it today. So um, we're going to believe that uh, they'll be able to wear those masks then because obviously the, the health is more important than the bottom line. Uh, another prayer request I read here was from Elise to pray for our grandmother who's 88, uh, who's afraid, uh, I guess the doctor's afraid to take her in and not allowed her to go in. So th- there's many, much to pray for here. Um, anybody else got any prayer requests, updates, and whatnot? And before we go to our scripture reading and start the formal part of the service? Uh, yes. Um, Alexis, uh, my wife's sister, she has a, she works in a nursing home and she has a fever right now. Um, a fever? Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's, it's only like 101 or something like that right now. It's 102 now. 102 now, but um, Alexis. Yeah. Alexis. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, you know, it. Hopefully, it's just a normal mm-hmm. fever, but. Right. Wow. Luckily, it's, um, and you know, it really doesn't matter because our God's able, regardless. Hey, Amen. That's it. Amen. <laughs> right now, Amen. Yeah. Indeed he is. Indeed he is. Where, where is she now? Is she at home? She's at home yeah. quarantined, yes. Okay, okay. Okay. What and about the kids? I have another buddy um, who works for the FBI. Who um, he's a, he's, He like works as SWAT team in the FBI. And mm-hmm. he's quarantined as well because their SWAT team was um, 
was around they they had to get somebody or something that that had the they had COVID nineteen. So he's yeah. also quarantined. And so he's somebody we could pray for. Yeah. He might be showing up tonight on the on. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and we do have to remember to pray for those uh, who are constantly exposed out there. I was thinking about our, our Walmart employee, Nigeria, and I know we've got others here in Oklahoma. Maybe Oklahoma's finally getting the, the news to wear the mask. But we have people who routinely um, are exposed out there um, and just and just continue to lift them up. The Bible says so clearly, the fervent, effective, the continual, effective prayer of the righteous of of much. Our job is to, is to be close to God. And to uh, and then to pray, pray accordingly. So, any other words of testimony or uh, admonition before we go on with the with what's left? Okay, I'd, I'd ask Evangelist Tyler to bring us the scripture, and Evangelist, feel free to share any thoughts that you have with that scripture as you give it. So, we'll we'll give the mic to uh, Joyce Tyler, uh, and she will um, share scripture with us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um can't see me right we can't see you okay, okay. that's better <clears throat> okay i can't no that's supposed to be my picture here babe no that's not me i think your i think your hand is covering it up my hand yeah there we oh. go oh it's pointing towards the tv babe it's not pointing towards me Thank you, Nora. I'm sorry. We'll get, we'll get it together here. It's pointing to us. Okay, let me go back to my scripture. Okay, I'm reading from uh, 2 Kings 18 and 32. Uh, my mind goes back to um, uh like the 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 children of um of um israel until i come and take you away to a land like your own land a land of corn and wine a land of bread and in the vineyard a land of oil olive and of honey that ye may live and not die, and hearken not unto Um And let's see. My mind goes back to where. Base, can we turn turn this around, please? Okay. Um, to like in the 1800s, uh, I need to flip my camera. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to do that so you can see my face. Um, if you, if you tap your screen, yeah. What am I doing? What, even, even, if we can't, even if we can't, you can just give us, give us your thoughts. Okay. Uh, my mind goes back to like the 1800, you know, when there was the plagues out. Um, uh, people were, were, were just dying and they were laying on cots, just dying everywhere. Um, and, you know, they couldn't pick the bodies up fast enough. Uh, before the next person caught the plague, um, uh, um, and it's just like now this this is a plague, and this is a time, you know, to us to get closer to God, and God wants all of us, not a piece of us, and so. Um, I think I think about the scripture that says, you know, uh, once he sees the blood, he will pass over us. You know, God knows his people. And with this plague going on, and God knows his people, he knows to pass 
over the right homes, who knows the people that his his chosen one, he knows those. And so we this is our time to uh draw people in and to tell the the people that's not saved of the goodness of God that they will not be lost. Um, God wants um, uh, us uh, to uh, tell of his goodness because he said to occupy until I come. This is a test with this plague going on and God wants us to draw nigh. Amen. Draw nigh unto him. And so Amen. this is all that I had to awesome. say on awesome. this uh, at this time. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Evangelist. All right. Um, um, so we'll um, we'll get ready to transition to uh, to John and um, we'll just sing a verse of uh, a song everybody knows. And I know we may get some echoes in here, but it's just amazing grace. And then after we finish, we'll uh, give it to uh, give it to John. Pastor John to give us tonight's discourse. God be with you, John. Robin, you want to start it for us? Can you come on? Uh, Amazing Grace. Uh -huh. That's my daughter here to start it for us. And uh, feel free to jump in. I think it will please be pleased to the Lord the sound we're going to make, even if it's a little cacophony of sorts. <laughs> Amazing Grace. get this uh file up real quick first In the meantime, everyone else could mute your phones until you have a question or comment. And we do like for the midweek to be interactive. Um, the same with our um, 1030 Sunday service. Uh, we have the same format Sundays at 1030, God willing. I think. Uh, Anybody has a link, and then if I doesn't have a link, reach out to somebody. Uh, but we we like you know, we don't mind being inter interrupted at all for the live services and getting the questions answered. And 
there's a way to raise your hand on this thing or you can just kind of, you know, chime in. We're real informal with it. So just have a God will can help. So I'm going back on mute, John, so you can do your thing. All right. I also um, want to just give kind of a praise report. report. Um, my, I, at my job, they furloughed a lot of people, but I'm still working. So um, glory to God for that. Can y'all hear us? Amen. Beautiful. Good. So God is good. All right. Praise the Lord, saints. Um, Today, I wanted to talk about a topic that I think is relatively relevant right now. And I, I, know, I know we deal with some warriors um, and, and the people in our uh, congregation are, um, are very strong-willed and strong-minded. Um, so, so this might come across a little um, uh, different for you guys. But, uh, but, but I wanted to talk about dealing with uh, fear and anxiety. Um, and I want you to know that God is calling us to be strong. Um, he, he's calling us to be strong. And not only is he calling us to be strong, he's equipping us to be strong and to stand and to do all that he's called us to do in, this, in the midst of this time. And understand that everything that God's deposited in, in you is for moments like this. This is why the trying of your faith worketh patience. This is why God has built and deposited much in you um, because, because he wants to um, use you in such a time like this. So uh, without further ado, we'll get into the word of God. And there's a, I'm a chess nerd a little bit, Bobby knows. And there's a famous chess player, he's a, he's a grandmaster. He said the, the threat is stronger than the execution. And uh, you have to understand when you are a child of God, when you are a child of God, nothing gets past God's quarters without it first getting without God signing off on it. But that doesn't mean you can't be threatened. Devil will stand outside your God's quarters all day long and, and, and try to hurl threats, tries to cause fear, try to cause you to curl up in a ball to render you ineffective. Um, but you have to understand that God, um, you know, I mean, think about all the things you've ever been scared of in life. I mean, think about all the times you've ever thought that there was a snake and you, you ran up to it and it was a water hose or you thought that it was, you know, I mean, I, get, I, I remember one time there was a, a, you know, it was late at night and I felt like a, you know, something, it felt like something was crawling on me. I slapped it, you know, and, and it was moving all around real fast. And it was like a, a ball of fuzz, you know. And I mean, so, so a lot of times we feel threatened by things that, that, are, that, that are really not, you know, valid threats to us. And, and I'm not saying that this isn't a valid threat. I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely not telling you to go out and act a fool or something like that. But all I am telling you to do is, is, is understand that, that there are so many threats in our lives. Threats come a dime a dozen. This won't be the last threat on our lives. The devil is in the constant business of causing us to, of trying to, to, to make our faith null and void. And we have to understand that God has the final say so. He has the final say so in all these things. So um, understanding that God has the final so say so is such a comfort and, so, and it brings so much peace when we get down to it. Um, this is a spiritual war, put on the full armor of God. And uh, when we go, go to Ephesians 6 and me, I'm going to pray real quick again. Our Heavenly Father, we just ask God anything um, that's not of you, Father. Father, we pray. God, that you plug it out, God. Bless us to receive your words, God. Grow us. We want you. We want more of you, Father. We want to be what you've called us to be, Father. We want to be everything that you've called us to be, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Help us to make this all about you, Father. Help us to get to the side. Help me to get out of the way, God. And Father, we just trust in you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So um, so when we look at this, this uh, particular passage here, um, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might. That is not a request. That is a command. That's not a request. That's a command. He said, he said, finally, my brother, he, he's about to wrap up his letter to, the, to, to Ephesus. And he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And, um, and this is God commanding us. He is wanting us to be strong. He, this does not say, my brother, you know, it's okay to be weak because God's going to come and swoop you up and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say any of that stuff that would, that would sound good or feel good or whatever. It's telling us to be strong. It says you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Now, obviously our strength is dependent on us trusting and believing and leaning and depending on God and his power. But we are called to be strong. We are, we're called to be strong in the Lord. And God has not called us to tuck our head in a stand like an ostrich and, 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 all, and all that stuff. He's called us to be strong. We're supposed to stand and do all the calls God, God has called us to do regardless of the environment, regardless of the circumstance. And then he says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It does not matter what the battle looks like. It doesn't matter what the terrain looks like. It doesn't matter what type of threat's being hurled. It doesn't matter what's taking place. We are never, this is never about flesh and blood. It's never about flesh and blood. It's always about something bigger than that. It's always about a big picture, heavenly things, spiritual things, um, principalities, powers, rulers, rulers in the dark, in, in darkness, uh, spiritual witness in high places. This is what we're battling against. We always want to make it about something that's not. Yes, we're battling the coronavirus, but what is the coronavirus about? This is bigger than the coronavirus. This is Bobby's faith. This is Daryl's faith. This is John's faith. This is DeAndre's faith. This is bigger than some virus. It will be bigger than some war. It will be bigger than some weather issue. No matter what it is, it's always bigger, and it's always about your faith. And we, God has equipped us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So, so he says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. To stand. So... What's going to happen at the end of this equation? See, what happens is when we put on the armor of God, it's designed to fortify us and stabilize us so that after everything the devil has hurled at us, at the end of the equation, there might be a 1,000 on one side of you and 10,000 on the other side of you, but it has not come near unto you. You are still standing. Our, our pastor preached a message one time, very anointed message about still standing. And uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the equation, God, God expect the expectation is that because of our faith, because of our dependence on God, because we have put on the armor of God, at the end of the equation, we will be victorious. And as a result of that, we will be standing. Um, it says, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and have it on the breastplate of righteousness. And this phrase, loins girt about with truth, I thought was so wonderful because it, there's several places in the Bible where God, um, you know, uses this phraseology to basically say what I would say. I would say, man up. Um, he uses like gird up your loins. He told Joe, in fact, he told Job in Job 38, one through four, he said, then the Lord answered Job out of whirlwind and said, who is this that dark it? Remember, Job went through all that he went through in life. And then he, he, he asked some questions of God. And God said this to Job. He said, 
Then, then the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind and said, who is this that darkened my counsel by words <laughs> without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. <laughs> and then he started talking about who he is. Where was that when I laid the foundation of the earth? <laughs> yes. So, and he also, he, he used that same phraseology to gird up thy loins like a man in Job 40, verse seven. Um, it's also used uh, for women. Um, it says uh, in Proverbs 31, 17, it says she girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. With, I mean, think about the, the, the vision there, strength. Um, and then in 1 Peter uh, 1, 13, Peter tells us, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is to tighten things up. Girding up your loins means you're tightening up uh, your focus. You're, you're bracing yourself. And when you, when you look at, um, I mean, this is talking about putting on a belt and tightening that belt. Gird up your loins. You can pull up your pants, get ready to go. Um, so we want to be in the truth. Um, so, I mean, you know, this phraseology that's used here, I just, it, to, to me, it just gives me, it makes me uh, more ambitious in the area of just being strong in this time, stepping up to the plate and, and, and doing all that God's called us to do. Because we have, we, most of us have never been in this type of environment before. Um, unless you're very, very old, you've probably never been in this type of environment before. And there's a lot of uncertainty. So we have a unique opportunity to walk by faith on a greater level than we've ever walked by faith before. And uh, I mean, praising the Lord now, these are the things that testimonies are made of. And we have the chance to lay hands on the sick. We have the chance to do all that God's called to do only if we're led by the Holy Spirit. But we have a chance to operate uh, under the power of God and do everything that we're called to do right now. And we need to take advantage of this unique, wonderful opportunity. Um, it says, um, and by the way, I don't want to miss out on. It says, and having the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that we are um, walking in a way that is worthy of our calling. We want to make sure we're walking with God. We're doing all that he's, he's uh, called us to do. And I will also say uh, the breastplate of righteousness is something you wear. It's not something, in this case, it doesn't appear to be something that you do. Um, but I mean, w which kind of makes me think about uh, the fact that our righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Um, but we are... We are righteous before God. We are in the truth. Um, and we are, we are seen as righteous before God because of shed blood at Calvary. And, uh, and, God, and that gives us the power to, it gives us part of what we need to stand. And the Bible says, in your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. Um, and when you think about, um, that's what this is. I mean, that's what everything is. Everything is fiery darts of the wicked. Like the, the devil's constantly trying to uh, throw darts at us to, to destroy our faith. And um, it's funny, the thing, very thing he's trying to destroy is the thing that we use to shield those darts from getting to us. So um, this is the, to me, uh, essential. Uh, we have to be walking with God and trusting that, 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 uh, that our faith is it's fortified in him. I don't even, guys, I don't even trust my own faith. I mean, I pray to God all the time that he keeps my faith intact. I pray to God that he, that, that he, because I understand that he is the one that sustains me and not any other, any other way. It's not somehow my strong, you know, something I'm doing on my end of faith 
that's causing me to prosper in the land. It's his voice. It's God's choice. It's his favor on my life. He gets to choose whether I live, whether I die, whether I prosper, whether I fail. It's up to him. And, uh, and I pray to God all the time. I say, Lord, give me more faith. Increase my faith. Bless me to be a man of faith. Bless me to walk by faith and not by sight. I want to be uh, somebody who believes God. And because of that, it's accounted me as righteousness. And I believe that as we, you know, as we exercise our faith, as we trust God, um, God is going to peel back the layers of this fearful event. And, and we're going to feel um, we're going to feel better. Um, remember, we're talking about we haven't really got to it yet, but we're talking about anxiety, dealing with uh, anxiety uh, and, and, and uh, fear. OK, so the next thing is t and take the helmet of salvation. Ooh, helmet of salvation. You need to be saved. <laughs> uh, if you're not saved, you need to be saved. Um, one thing, one beautiful thing about calamity and pestilence is that it, it reminds us that we have a ticking clock with fate. Mm -hmm. God has said, and there are two divine appointments that nobody's able to avoid. Two mm -hmm. divine appointments. The Bible says is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Those two appointments, you will not escape because mm -hmm. it's appointed by God. I don't know, God might have spoken other words in your life, but I know those two words are spoken in all of our lives, right? So uh, when we see that, we need to be saved. And that's part of having peace. One of the reasons why we have peace and the world is, is going crazy is because we're saved. It's because we know that at the very worst, at the very worst, all this can do is destroy this body. All coronavirus could do, if, if, if the Lord were to allow it and, 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 it were to, and it were to take us out, what's left? Well, we as believers know that this is the beginning, that, that we will live forever in eternity with God and that we will be happy <laughs> and God will be, and I mean, we will be everything that we're supposed to be. Um, so, you know, being saved is such an important factor of having peace in my opinion. Um, instead of playing some guessing game. And then the next thing is, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And uh, one thing that my, my pastor, who I love, um, I cherish, and uh, he's my mentor, um, he, he taught me that, um, that the sword is not your sword. It's the sword of the spirit. Um, so you can slap people with the word of God any which direction that you get ready. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And as the Spirit gives you words, that's how you do what you're called to do. Now, I, I want you to notice that a sword is an offensive weapon, normally not designed for defense. It's normally designed for offense, for striking, for killing an opponent. Um, when you look at um, some of these are designed more defensively, but we're, we're getting to this place where uh, now it's time for you to fight back. And, uh, and I, I love patches like this because, because you know, uh, Pastor Bobby knows I'm inspired by anything that seems warlike. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, but the sword of spirit, it's the word of God. Um, Thy word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word of God is powerful. And, and when you have the word of God on your side, all these things, all these fears, all these, everything that the devil has to say on the outside ne just never gets louder <laughs> than, he, than the power of the words of God. Never gets louder when you truly have the word of God on your side. So I just, uh, uh, this is absolute necessities. Um, if we were if we were to call this like a boot camp for you know surviving you know, spiritual warfare, um, and we, I found this cool little picture online. Couldn't wait to put it in here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my, my brother, y'all know how I think. But uh, but I mean, this is how God sees us. This is how God sees us. Like He doesn't say, you know, if you feel like it, be strong in the Lord and the power is mine. 
He doesn't say some of you who are chosen, some of the select few, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He doesn't say you pastors, you elders, you bishops, you prophets. He doesn't say any of that. If you are a child of God under the voice of Paul to his letter to the Ephesus, he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take on the full armor of God. This isn't for me to take on only. This isn't for Pastor Bobby to take on or Pastor Daryl. Or, or Lady Grace, or, or Lady DeAndrea. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this is not for this is not for some special class of believer that's just somehow over everybody else. Which, by the way, doesn't exist. Um, this is for you. If you are a child of God, you are called, commanded, and empowered to take on the full armor of God. Not one piece of it left behind and do everything that God has called you to do. So we're gonna get into a little bit more of what God has called us to do. Now that we have our armor, what's next? What next? So this last verse, I kind of messed up on the slide there, the typo, but it says, verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's a twofold statement and both parts are important, but understand that this is just as much as part of the armor of God as every piece of armor we just went over. Your prayers protect me, my prayers protect you. Um, I got a friend, I hope he's on, I don't know if he's on right now or not, but he told me he would if he could, he'd be on. He, he's an FBI SWAT guy, I actually talked to you a little bit about him when we prayed, but, um, but he taught me how the FBI busts through a door and, uh, and what they do. Like he breaches for the FBI SWAT team, so he busts open the door and they, they have a very, a cool system on how they, they run up to a door, they call out their numbers, and the first guy's always right. Whichever way he goes, the next guy goes the other direction and shoots for that. He clears a corner, the next guy clears the other corner, and the last guy shoots, clears the middle, and, and they have to run like rabbits to each side as they're going into an entryway um, so that if somebody is shooting a gun, the, the shooter of the gun will chase the, the initial guy who busts open the door, and the next guy coming out the door will take that guy out. So, um, but our prayers, <laughs> I say it because our prayers, our prayers are like that for each other. God designed this system to where our prayers are like having, you know, each other's back in a, in a war zone. Like, like, like you thought, you didn't know what was behind you. There's a guy behind you with an ax and Sister Dolores' prayer comes and pierces the guy through the neck, and the guy falls out. And then there's a guy on the side of Grace with the axe, and DeAndre's prayer comes and lights that person up. I mean, this is God's design. Isn't it kind of cool? This is warfare. Our prayers are part of God's weaponry. It's part of what God uses to foil and quench the plans of the enemy. And, and what's so cool about it is we get to be a part of something so big and glorious as God's war. We're, part, we're partakers in a war, a battlegrounds that's fought between Satan and God, and we're pieces of the puzzle. I mean, that by itself should make somebody say amen. Amen. I, I want to be part of what God is doing. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, amen. so yeah. praying is such a vital part um, of, of all of this, and so, and, and this is where peace comes in. Um, and when we, when we look at um, th this precious passage about prayer, and we, and we all love this passage, but uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 8, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto, known unto God. Now, real quick, we're talking about anxiety and fear here, okay? So I want to, I want to uh, admonish you right now to zero in on these next few verses, okay? So number one, 
be careful for nothing is an old English way of saying, don't have anxiety. Don't be anxious. Okay. So you are commanded in the text not to be anxious. That, but he doesn't just say, don't be anxious. It's all good. There's something that we're supposed to do. So this is what we're supposed to do. And I want you to think about the armor of God real quick. Every piece of armor of God was something that we're supposed to wear, except for praying and watching. Those two things are something that we're supposed to do. So he says, be careful, don't be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Pray, see God's face, call upon the name of the Lord. There's nothing more powerful than calling upon the name of the Lord. What can you give me that God can't give me? Yeah. What can you say to me that God can't say to me? What can yeah. you, there's nothing you can do for me. I love all of you. Y'all know how much respect I have for some of you. Some. No. <laughs> I love all of you. I love all of you. But, but there's no, I hate, to tell, I hate to say it, but there's nothing you can do for me that can come anywhere near what God can do for me. Amen. I mean, so call upon his name on my behalf. That's the best gift you can ever give to me. Amen. Let your request be made known unto God. And here's what the Bible says happens. This is what the Bible says. I'm not saying it. The Bible says this is what happens. It says, and the peace of God. Hallelujah. Passeth all understanding. Yes, sir. You know, keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Mm. Jesus, that's not Thank my words. That's not Dr. Field telling you how to overcome anxiety. That is the <laughs> word of the living God. Hallelujah. He's saying that the peace of God which passed on it shall come on keep <laughs> your hearts and mind. Low yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Now, 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 now here's the part, here's the role that we play in that. This last verse is, is, is gonna help us remain at peace during this time. It's gonna help us overcome fear and anxiety during this time, this last verse. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And I want you to think about something. The Bible says you know, somewhere in I think Proverbs 23, it says that um, as, a, as a man, as he thinketh, uh, as a man thinketh, there he, he, he is, or something like that. So How's it said? So is so he. he. So is he, okay. So as a man thinketh, so is he. And uh, uh, I want you to think about how much of a role your thoughts play. In fact, I can't, I, I, I tried to think the other day, um, what area of spiritual warfare doesn't involve our thoughts? And I really couldn't think of anything. Um, I do know that, that there are things that happen, but uh, when it comes to our faith, what, I mean, really our thoughts are at the forefront of the battleground. I mean, you think we're, comp we're composed of, you know, flesh, spirit, and soul. And our thoughts, and our soul is that is pretty much the battleground um, for for the enemy. He he wants to, you know, and the things we take in our mind and our thinking, those things um, affect our faith, and they change the way we view the world. Um, so it is so important that we think on good things. Understand, there are there's still goodness in the land, even right now. There's goodness in the land. And God, guess what? Has not left the throne. He ain't left the throne. And he's not going to leave the throne anytime soon. Amen. He's on the throne reigning right now. Yes. Sitting in heaven reigning. Mm -hmm. None of this is bothering God. I mean, the next time we see Jesus, he's going to be wearing something that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he's going to be ready to handle business. So. Our God is sitting on a throne reigning in the universe. And we don't have to sit back, cower, you know, cowering, 
We trust in living God. There's goodness in the land. Let's think about the goodness that's taking place in our lives. Um, now, one thing I want to say is, I think the key to, uh, or one of the main things I just want to draw out is the first thing it says, whatsoever things are true. I want you to think about that. Whatsoever things are true. I mean, one time I was riding a horse with one of my friends. It's kind of weird. I know a black guy riding a horse, but I was riding a horse um, in the middle of a field and uh, it was at nighttime. I don't know. I, I know y'all are just thinking, I do not know this guy right now. But, uh, but I was riding a horse at nighttime with, uh, with one, one of my buddies who was just a horse fanatic. And it was the main reason I was riding it. I was really, to be honest, it was a ministry thing I was doing. But, um, but I was riding this horse at nighttime and the horse saw a white, it was, it was actually a bucket out in the middle of the field. But it saw this bucket in the middle of the field and the horse just veered off so aggressively that it almost killed us both. I mean, we, we were like next to like this hill. I felt like I was like four, like two feet, two to four feet from the ground. Um, and, and I mean, it was so aggressive that we almost toppled over. The horse would have rolled on me with its thousand pound body um, over a, a bucket, a white bucket. I mean, what's true? Here's what's true for believers. Here's what whatsoever things are true for believers. You serve the living God who with one word can cause death to happen, can cause life to happen, can cause freedom to happen, can cause, I mean, sickness to happen. I mean, it, he can do anything. That's your father. You don't just serve him. He's your father. So I'm not going to let no bucket in the field have me terrified if that great God is my father. Man. So my, you're not called to dwell. I love this picture, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but you're not called to dwell in a state of anxiety. <clears throat> now, now, you know, I'm like this. You are called to be strong. You are called to stand. You are called to pray. So make the choice today to be who you are called to be. All right, Pastor Bobby, you got it, dude. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Uh -oh. Did I kill it? <clears throat> Where is it? This one. Where'd he go? Are y'all still on? Are you still on? Do what? The bottom. The bottom. We're on this. Okay. The video. The video. Help me, man. Is this one? Okay. Um, we can hear y'all. Oh, thank you. We can hear and see you. Okay, thank you. I think you better be cooking something for us. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, what a powerful word, my brother, my God. What a powerful, powerful word. Um, John, I just, the Lord just used you. I was praying for you today. Uh, you know, uh, I was out there um, pulling weeds in my yard, which has come my little pastime nowadays. Um, man, I was praying, and I, and I tell you, man, the Lord just used you tonight. tonight. What a powerful, powerful word. Uh, you just said so many good things. I, don't, I just don't even know how to recap. I, I don't want to mess with it because I know so much is marinating. I think little pieces of that word resonated with different people. Uh, I know where I got mine. I got mine when you went to First Peter. It said, gird up, gird, gird up the lawn to your, your mind. Be sober. Hope to the end for the grace. Uh, you know, stay in the game. Get your mind ready, you know. Uh, for some of us, that was, that, was, that was their piece. And others, you know, then be strong, stand. Um, I just so much here that I think the Lord just used you. There are many people here with many needs, many places in their life, many places in their walk with God. And I think the Lord just allowed you to touch on everybody here on some point. Uh, I'm up to four for a little bit. The part that reached me was um, just gird up your mind. Get your mind right. You know you're in it. it it's, it's live. Sometimes it feels like we're in a movie. Anybody, anybody feel like that? Sometimes it's like we're in a movie, you know? You listen to presidents. You listen to the reports. You listen to, you see people being locked in their houses. You look at empty streets, empty stores. I, I drove by. It just seems like I'm in one of those end-time movies. Amen. And, uh, 
And, uh, and, but when you got to Peter, I said, Lord, I thank you for that scripture. Girl, get, get your mind ready. Here it is. It's on you, you know? And um, we have people saying all sorts of things. This is the end time, this is that. And, but we have to be rock steady in the word of God. You know, this is not the end time. <laughs> this is the warning. Oh, and, 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 I, and that preacher says, this, this is the end time. I, I come against that. This is not the end time. This is a warning. And sure. we, have to, we, have to, uh, we have to be ready. We have to stand. And uh, God has given us opportunity to get back where we need to be. Some of us have been on break too long and casual too long and lax too long. And the Lord's lining us up. You know, it might be a prelude to the end time, you know. But uh, in the end time, you know, people won't be recovering like this, you know. Ninety-some percent of the people get this virus recover. In the end times, yeah, uh, <laughs> you ain't gonna see ninety-some percent of people recovering. So, but but it's a warning. But uh, I, I love that passage, John. Where when you went, you did so many. I just so much. I almost don't want to stir the pot with it. But you did. Uh, when you said, "Gird up the loins of your mind. Get your mind right. It's happening. This is real. It's happening. And be sober. You know. And hope to the end. You know. Stay in the game to the end. You know. In it to win it. But brother, man, you ministered to me. I know my wife was taking some copious notes and. But I want to open the floor. Maybe others have some testimony of how pertinent this word was to them, how real it was, and just how what a blessing it was. Anybody just want to say anything about it? I know I was blessed tremendously. Well, John, you reached one. You reached <laughs> one. <laughs> I got some. <laughs> and, and we, we don't want our silence to make it. <laughs> it wasn't for us, but it was really on. Point, John, I really Amen. appreciate it. It's going to help carry us through. Amen. I appreciate that. Hey, Amen. hey. Amen. By the way, my brother Haytham, my brother Haytham showed up to this. Okay. Thing. So oh, thank you, awesome. I love you, buddy. I love you too, Haytham. Good we, to see you. We would love to see you for one second, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> would be nice. I also have to acknowledge too. Speaking of shout out, um, um, is um, we have uh, my um. Mom's here. Mom seal is on. She's on by phone. She's on by phone. And so uh, that's dad and mom seal there. Uh, Grace's mom and dad, but also mine by way of marriage. And uh, Torlene Rayleigh was on from Tallahassee. Amen. Amen. She's we had some Florida on. folk here. I don't know if she's still there. Now, I see Giannis is on. Uh, but any, uh, so anyway, I started naming names. I got to stop. Um, but any, uh, any other witnesses to this word before we wrap this thing up. I almost hate to, I just feel so good, John. I'm just basking in, in, in that word, brother. I'm just basking in that word. God use you mightily. 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 Hey, uh, hey, Bates, thank you very much, Nia, and I really enjoyed the word, man. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Coach Farmer. That uh, That's a colleague of mine, Coach Farmer, uh, Chad Farmer and his wife. They came, they came to the thing. Ch Chad, Chad, show your video right quick. Let us see you. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you can't do that to win. Awesome. Hey, what's up, buddy? Awesome. Hey, what's up? I appreciate God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. I, I love that dude, man. That dude has my back so strong. Mm. I love him. Awesome. Awesome. Man, awesome. Hello, are you trying awesome. to get in? I see Nigeria's on. We were praying for you, Nigeria, and, and uh, hoping that they loose that policy at Walmart with the mask. We got you covered. Thank in prayer. you, guys. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, we, we yeah, and you know you you only sixteen, and and God uses people around you to to to, to bolster you and to show show up until your faith gets where it needs to be. But you got people around you praying, girl. Now don't worry. Thank you. Yeah, certainly, yeah. certainly. Steve, good to see you, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, the Richardson, the Richardson, sweet potato pie maker. <laughs> Alan's, in, <laughs> <laughs> Alan's in the house. Um, but any other witnesses to this word before we uh. Go on. Uh, so thank you again, Pastor John. Uh, I just, just, I'm just so blessed, so blessed by that. Um, what I want to do, uh, Pastor Daryl is going to be uh, teaching uh, Hebrews Sunday, God willing, at 10:30, uh, and uh, and then we do a Facebook Live message at 11:30. Um, so I, I want him to tease us about the, uh, give us a tease about the upcoming Sunday school lesson, what chapter we in. But also, I, I just feel like somebody else needs to say something about tonight. So I'm, I'm going to give give a couple more minutes here. Anybody else want to say something about tonight? Hey, Eartha, I see you over there. How you doing, Eartha? You cooking. So, you cooking? Okay, all right, all right. Okay, I'm, a, I'm over here about the bus because I am so grateful. I'm just so grateful. I'm just, I mean, for me, all I can think of is to be able to witness Something that I actually only read about in the Bible, the things that God did and the things that the people went through. And that's what I'm seeing right now. 
Amen. Is Amen. God's work, God's in control, God's Amen. doing it. Whatever he does is fine with me. I'm Amen. satisfied. I just want to be able to do my part and whatever it is that he wants me to get out of this, I want to get it all. Amen. And, um, I just feel really grateful. I just do. And uh, John, I am making a big old giant pot of gumbo. You was asking about that. And so those of you that, I don't know how y'all feel about uh, Corona, but uh, based on how y'all feeling about it, if you want some, uh, if you don't, fine. I'll deliver tomorrow to those who want some. I'll bring it to your doorstep. I'm, I ain't gonna come in, but I'll drop it off. Arthur, every, everybody left the meeting. Everybody left me. Amen. I just to say that I concur. Um, just that was a good word, John. And then your little picture, <laughs> I had to screenshot it because I was like trying to <clears throat> imagine myself like with the full armor on, you know. And like Eartha said, like we just got to do our part, and and that's what I want to do. Like I'm just willing to be a vessel to be used by God, especially during this mm. time where mm -hmm. God can have a lot of people's attention because he took so much from us. You know, like Uncle Daryl said last week, we just got to be open to hear from him. And so like, y'all just keep this up. I'm loving it. Um, it's good. Like God has a reason for it all. And I'm just grateful that I'm Amen. Here, Amen. And able to see Amen. it and uh, Amen. acknowledge it and be in the right mind to understand what is happening Amen. right now. So, Amen. Keep praying for me as I pray for y'all. And Eartha, please hurry up with this gumbo because I'm hungry. Seriously. Elise <laughs> <laughs> uh, is in my living room and Nas in one of my bedrooms. They in here bugging me about how long it's going to be. Hi, Stephanie and Steve. <laughs> hey. Amen. All right. With Brother, that, I'm Brother John. Oh. I'm sorry, go Brother ahead. John. Yes, ma'am. Go, go ahead, Sammy. You, oh, you, uh, you were reiterating about stand and, and how we're supposed to fight. I remember when dad was teaching that, he would always say, now notice that everything's prepared for the front of you. God didn't give you any uh, provisions for your backside. So you're not supposed to run. Amen. Amen. I thought about that same thing, Stephanie. He always said that. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I just thank God again for word. I'm, I'm just, it's just bubbling over. I don't know how many different um, ways this word is going to hit me, boy. I tell you, it's, it's just bubbling in my soul. Uh, John, thank you so much for letting the Lord use you. Thank you for being submitted uh, to God enough to hear from him. And thank you for sharing. Uh, and and that's, that's what we've been called to do. Each one of us has been given a gift. And uh, the scripture says, let every man minister according to the grace, the gift that's been given you. So all of us have a chance to impact lives. And I tell you, you want to be the one standing for your household, standing for your family. You want to be the one that they look to. How about it, believers? Can we stand? Can we be that one? Amen. 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 Uh, we, uh, I'll give it to Pastor Daryl. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited. I just, oh, I don't, I don't even want to hang this phone call. I'll probably say it'd be the last one off tonight, but, um, <laughs> don't end the meeting. Just, just let people fade out, John. Don't end the meeting. Just let it fade out. Okay. Um, but, um, cause I'm just going to sit here a little while and just stare at the screen, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um, Pastor Daryl's been teaching from my Hebrews. Um, I, I want to say one thing here before we go to that. Uh, I was out in the yard today doing my weed. And uh, for me, it's been a real challenge because as a believer, you know, you have to have a certain standard. As a believer, your yard can't be the most jacked up yard in the neighborhood. You know, Amen. you can't be a Christian and have the most jacked up yard. It's true. And because they look at you, like, hey, it's going to church. You've got that even more in his yard, right? And, and, and it, 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 turns, it, turns, it really turns into a reproach. Uh, against and that's what a lot of the least things will call people not to be. it's just like being in a restaurant and talking about jesus all night and then leaving a little sorry tip you can't do that if you if you're talking about jesus at the table you need to leave 20 dollars tip or something let them know that you you know that, that that the word won't be blasphemed anyway so i was out there trying to get the weeds out of my yard and uh and uh i noticed that uh and solomon said by the way i beheld the yard of the sluggard and it was overrun with reeds weeds so there you go. There's two witnesses, but 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 uh, there's a believer. There's certain things you have to do just to adorn the gospel. But I know this is three seasons now that I fought those weeds in my yard. I tried. I've never had. I always use Scotch weed to feed. I've never had it not fail. But these weeds in this neighborhood, <laughs> these are special weeds. They they just laugh. I put Scotch down there twice. They just laughed. I've never had weeds just. So I went and got me some strong stuff that almost kills your grass. Put it on. They still there. 
Then I had my yard man. He sprayed it. They still there. And I said, Lord. And then yesterday, uh, I noticed my neighbor's yard. The, the worst patch of weeds is in this, in this no man's land. Y'all have ever had that little spot of land between your yard and the neighbor's yard? Nobody really wants to mow it. You want the neighbor to mow it. He wants you to mow it. You know, nobody wants to claim it till it's time to sell your property. You know, right on the edge, <laughs> no man's land. <laughs> All right. So I got a little strip like that, and that's where the weeds are worse. But I noticed yesterday or the day before that none of those weeds go. Into in my neighbor's yard. And so I noticed that he doesn't have a single weed. I got all these crazy weeds in that stretch. And you can see the line between my yard and his because not a single weed is in his yard. So finally I called him. I, I said, here's the problem. I need, I need to use whatever he's using. So I called the man over. I explained my problem. I said, I'm on my third round of weed killer. Nothing's worked. I said, what do y'all use? He said, well, you know, we don't, we don't do this. He said, we call, and I'm just not to advertise these people, but we call True Green. They come out here Four times a year, they spray this yard. And, and I looked at that yard, and I am a true green fan. Why? I've never, I don't know who the company is. I've never seen them. I, know, I don't know who the owner is. I don't know what product you use, but I've seen it work. This man, my, my, my weeds go right to that man's yard and stop. <laughs> so, and so I understand that whatever you do, it works. <laughs> And so what I want to say is, to this world, we got to be that true green. We 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 got to be the true green, the true blue believers. And 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 and, and, and we have seen, we know what we have works. We know we're in the truth. We know God, we have seen God move. We don't have to count back, but just a few days, and we say that was a miracle. That shouldn't have happened, but it did. This worked in my favor. We've seen God move. Yes. And so it's time for us to be that 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 like His yard is a light, an example of me. And I'm going to use whatever he's using. It's time for us to be that kind of example where, where they say, you know what? I need what that person is. I need what Stephanie has. I need what Brittany has. I need what Daryl has. I need what DeAndre has. I need what you got because I can see the difference in your life and how you're standing. And so uh, this word tonight John gave us will cause us to be that 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 believer standing out that sword. Yeah, I, knew you, I knew you would love that graphic, John. That's your graphic. That man with that sword. I knew that. That's your kind of graphic. Uh, but we need to be the example these worlds need to see. The same way my neighbor's yard is my example. And I'm going I'm to do whatever he's doing because it's working. We need to be just that stark because we've seen God move. We've seen him. We know what we, it's, it's just, it's just whether we subscribe to it or whether we want to follow along, whether we want to walk in faith and obedience or not. But we know that this God we serve is a true God. The, the, the Hebrews call him Yahweh. I will be what I want to be. I will do what I want to do. I'll go where I want to be. Oh, excuse me, I'm already there. I can't go. I'm already there. This kind of God we serve. And John's word tonight reminds us of who it is we serve and whose we are. So thank you again, Pastor John, for that. I'm, you, you fired me up, man. I'm ready to preach. You fired me up. Preach. So um, I want Pastor Daryl, uh, we, we'll be back again Sunday, God willing. I, I can't wait till Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Daryl's preaching out of Hebrews. Uh, Pastor Daryl, you can tell us where you are in Hebrews, what we can expect Sunday. Uh, the, there's a link that will be sent out 1030 Sunday. We'll be in Hebrews and then we'll follow that with a, a live uh, message 1130 on Facebook Live. So Pastor Dale, it's yours and then I'll ask somebody to pray us out. I'm going to ask one of our guests to pray us out. I don't want anybody from our church to pray us out. I want one of our online guests to pray us out. Y'all be figuring out who it is. Once Pastor Dale finishes, I want, I want, I want one of our online guests to pray us out. So we got, we got people all over. So um, you, you that live out, out, outside of Oklahoma City, one of y'all have to do it. You got to be outside of Oklahoma City. So that's the rule. After they get through praying, I want all of y'all to go open up y'all front door and take a lap around the, uh, around the, uh, the neighborhood, giving God praise. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Amen. 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 Say, well, who is that? running around the neighborhood. Those are saints. Amen. They might lock us up out here. Stephanie lives in a good neighborhood. <laughs> 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 in my neighborhood, we talking about who stole something. All right. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. Pastor Darrell, give us give us what you got on uh on uh, uh for Hebrew. What, what do we have? What can we look forward to Sunday? God willing. Hey, thank you, At 1030, and there's a link that will be sent out. Uh, thank you, Pastor John. Beautiful uh, live class tonight. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, it is a popular, common passage, but I never really read it the, the way you taught it tonight. So uh, I yeah. like the whole gird up part. And, um, and what was convicting to me, my part that I've taken home is more of the truth. 
get along with truth and what's true. Uh, and that was more important to me because uh, like I had, a, I hear a lot of conspiracy theories about coronavirus, where it started, what's the plot. And I like listening to those things. And I try to figure out, no, nope, that one's not good. I could, I could find the fallacy in that, that theory and things like that. And none of that's true. And I would spend more time on things that I know are not true trying to play around with it than I would actually spend on the truth. Uh, so tonight, starting tonight, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm only going to what's true, and we know what's true. So let's just focus on that, what, what God has said, and uh, stick to that. So I appreciate that. I spend my time better now. Yeah. For a Sunday, we're going to be uh, still in Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, last Sunday, we were in chapter 12, verse 25. And that lesson is on the Facebook page. Look at the uh, PowerPoint from that. This Sunday, we're in chapter 12, taking on verses 26 and 27. It's actually a continuation of what we started with last Sunday. Uh, last Sunday, it was all about hearing from God. Uh, tomorrow, or this Sunday, it's still about hearing from God and how we're going to um, respond to what God is doing. Uh, and Dale, would, you, would you mind reading those two verses? You're gonna cover Sunday, would you mind reading those? And the uh, and it's it's interesting too. Um, so I'm going to read these verses now. Is that uh, for you, for those who don't know, we started Hebrews uh, chapter one, verse one, uh, back in 2017, and we finally are just now getting to verse chapter 12, verses 25, 26, and 27, because we basically go word by word, line by line, verse by verse. We don't really skip over anything, and so we happened. I'll say happened to end up at a passage that really relates so much to what's going on today uh, in the world. And so in uh, verse 25, I'm gonna read 24, 25, 26, 27. Um, well, I'm gonna read 25, 26, 27. 25 is what we did last Sunday, and we're gonna do 26 and 27 this Sunday as well. So verse 25, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth much, more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. That's the warning. Uh, this week, uh, we're in 26 and 27, and it says, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And that's just related to us today. A whole lot of shaking is going on, and people are doing a whole lot of moving. And people are figuring out, this is not important. Let's get rid of that. This is important. Let's keep that. So what exactly is that? So we're going to talk about that on Sunday. Amen. What needs to be moved, because everything is shaking. But Amen. something won't be moved. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. I, I'm, I'm already excited. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Uh, so uh, we look forward to that. And I want to say uh, one more thing, too. We yes, sent uh -huh. the, uh, the draft lesson out already, uh, mm -hmm. and it's on the group me. I think Brittany, may have, when did you post it already? Well, church, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. So okay. Brittany has posted the draft lesson on group, me, group chat already. If you uh, haven't received